let's let's talk a little bit about um, on the business side of things. Mm-hmm. Obviously, a lot of people go say, hey, you know what? You got to build a business plan. You know, you got to have your two year, three year, five year projections. You know, how are you going to be growing? Are you going to take any money in? Are you going to investors? When you went and you took over the business, knowing what you know now, is there anything you would do differently or coach maybe like a, a, a mini mozzie, like a smaller version of yourself? Yeah, you know, I, I would say, um, I, I would say, you know, one of the, um, you know, if I, if I could, you know, go back again, the one thing that I wish I would have learned maybe a little earlier in business is, um, is you know, uh, what direction really to focus in. Because I think as a, as, you know, as a, a business owner, whether you're a new business owner or you've been doing a little while, you know, it, there, there's times where you, we get a little lost, I think, at times. It's like, okay, you know, I, I know where I want to be, but, you know, how do I get there, you know? You know, where, you know what do I focus on? But I, I would say, you know, for, for me, uh, what, you know, one, one of the things that really changed the direction of my company was focusing on quality. Um, you know, focusing on, on, on selling a quality product versus just trying to be, um, you know, get in the mud and be price competitive. Everything about, I need to be the cheapest guy out there, but focusing more on, hey, you know what? No, I, you know, I don't need to be the cheapest guy out there. Um, You know, there are plenty of companies out there that will service that customer, right? That's just looking for just that, but really focusing on, you know, quality products, you know, and, um, and focusing on, on that really helped me to kind of turn a corner in the, in the business was, you know, just, you know, go, going after that higher end product, focusing on the quality installation. Um, and, you know, that really also helped to really build our brand too, because, you know, that's, you got to think about really, um, you know, how you want to be known as a company. When, when somebody hears your brand, um, you know, what should, you know, what do you want the next thing um, to be that enters their mind, you know, and I, I think, you know, for us, it was really focusing on, you know, being, being a, a, a quality company, you know, customer service and, and, you know, selling a good quality product. Yeah. And really charging what you're worth. I feel like a lot of pros get, get into the trap, you know, they've got, they're one of three bids, they're one of four bids, you know, and they're like, all right, well, I don't want to be the highest. I don't want to be the lowest. Let me kind of try to guess where the middle is and maybe I'm making a profit. Maybe I'm not, I don't know, but you know, if I'm beating the lower guy, at least I'm better than the lower guy. And then if I'm not the highest guy, my chances increase. I feel like it's a very easy trap to fall into. And I feel like, especially when you're just starting your business or you're just, you know, it's still on the smaller side, it's really easy to say, no, I'm going to take all business and I can't lose any bids. And uh, oftentimes, you know, when we had our business, we were like, okay, do we want to win a hundred percent of every demo that we do? The, the answer is no. You know, really you wanna win right around 50%. So that means you're priced right at that sweet point where half people are like, nah, I don't know. You know, and the other half people see the value and they pay you. And that helps you build that really good scalable business um, on really good business unit economics. And if you don't do that, I feel like that's an easy trap to fall into. And I feel like you, Matt, you've done a great job correctly identifying that pretty, pretty early on for going like, hey, no, we just stand for quality. And we're not going to do any jobs that aren't priced to give us the ability to offer that quality service to the customer. And it started kind of with the customer inspection, which is, you know, do the right thing for them. The right thing isn't necessarily the cheapest. And in fact, most cases it never is. Um, and so you found a great way to, to model that into your culture and the way that you sell and build. And we, you know, we fell, I fell into that trap early on where, you know, because the first thing, you know, when you're, when you're in the home services industry, the first thing that, that the customer does, right, is they, you know, um, you know, they throw up that wall, right? They're gonna, they want to, you know, they want to protect themselves, and they kind of throw up a wall. Whether you're selling a water heater, carpet cleaning, or you know, an air conditioner, um, they kind of throw up that wall, and it's all about price, you know. But you know what? What I what I eventually learned is is you need to ignore that. Don't listen to that. You put. You need to push through that and you know whether you're you're an owner of a business or you're a you know you're an estimator or a salesman that works for a business you got to just push through that because early on I kind of fell into that trap where you hear that a few times and it's like okay I, you know high volume you know low margin let's just I want to get every single job and um, you know and that was okay you know I, I was able to, to grow the company to you know about three you know three and a half million dollars a year 
you know, by doing that, but I thought I was killing myself. I mean, you know, I mean, the amount of installations I was doing to get to that point, you know, in every installation you do, you know, there's risk and liability and, you know, and, um, you know, then and finally, you know, I, I had a, a territory manager came in one day and sat down and, and we were talking about, you know, in our industry, it's, it's called mix, right? It's the, it's your lower efficiency equipment versus your higher efficiency and, you know, how much of each are you selling? And, you know, I had a territory manager come in, he sat down, he put some numbers on, on paper and, um, you know, he showed me where, you know, the, the labor cost, the hard cost, the labor cost, the cost to answer the phone, Dang. you know, the gas, the, that all stays the same, right? And then all of a sudden now you sell a, a you know, uh, a higher end, higher quality system and, um, you know, with all the same amount of risk and, and, and hard costs. And it was just amazing what a difference that made, you know, for us. You know, I, I remember that year we, um, you know, the following year after I, I got that advice and really looked at it, um, you know, we ended up doing 20 percent less volume and made 30 percent more margin profit. And it was just like, wow. And that was like the light bulb for me. It's like, okay, wait a minute, you know, um, you know, push through, you know, uh, that wall that customers first throw. Because truly most customers out there, yeah, they, they you know, they, they want to to get a deal, you know, but they're, they, they're also more focused on quality, you know, especially in home services. This is a place where they're going to live. You know, they, they you know, they, they want the quality, you know, and as long as you provide a fair price, you know, and you can show them that quality, um, um, you'll win, you know, and that, you know, you know, we uh, ended up going, you know, that year from about a $3 million, three and a half million dollar company um, uh, to about $7 million, you know, and that was, a, that's a, uh, you know, a good jump, you know, over about a year, year and a half time. I mean, that's amazing um, growth. You're, yeah. you're more than doubling the business in a year, year and a half. Year I mean, half. you know, from, from those two figures, then obviously just operating at a, at a, at a good net profit. Uh, yeah. because, you know, you could get to seven or 10 million. I see shops all the time and, you know, they're, they're sitting in the single digits and then it's just like, you're yeah. just spinning your wheels. You know, you could, you could do far less work and make far more money and not have to deal with all the nightmares, of just keeping the truck rolling at that kind of a pace. Yeah. Yeah. You know, know, know what type of customer you want to work with. And, and, you know, the, the thing is, what you have to understand is that, you know, your, you know, your business is not going to be the right fit for, everybody right i mean if you're you know if you're the right fit for 40 or 50 percent of the customers that, that that you visit um you're doing extremely well you know and um you know but i would definitely say you know the focus on quality that focus on you know the higher end um you know systems um really helped us you know turn uh, that was you know one of the one of the things you know that really helped us turn a corner in the business so that was like your first light bulb aha moment yeah. where you then doubled your business and then you do it again by actually doing the opposite of what most home service businesses do, which is retracting different types of services and only focusing on one thing and doing it really well. Talk us through why you made this decision and what it actually did for your business. Yeah. So we were, you know, we were, um, we did we did commercial heating and air conditioning, residential heating and air conditioning, uh, uh, refrigeration. Um, you know, we we started um, uh, doing uh, you know some some roofing, and you know we just we had all these different areas that we were out you know focused on. Well, you know, because my thinking was, hey, heck, you know, if we can get into these other areas, you know, we've got that many more customers, and and you know, there's that much more more need. Well, you know, the problem with that is is when you start to do that, you really can't focus and do any one thing really well. Um, your resources are spread thin. You know, yet when it comes to training your team, you're training, you know, on, you know, four or five different things instead of just one. And, and it just, we started to really get spread out to where, you know, we, we, uh, we were doing everything pretty good, but we weren't doing any one thing, you know, amazingly well. So, you know, it was, it was, you know, pretty risky because, you know, we used to do a lot of, of work for home remodelers. And, and I remember that was the, you know, the first thing that, that we, uh, that we cut. It's just, it's a tough industry. But I remember cutting that. And then I just remember in about a three or four month period of time, seeing, you know, that, you know, we just pulled all our focus back to, you know, the, just the residential retrofit market seeing the change and i was like wow you know i mean yeah at first you're scared to do that right because you're thinking well I, you know I'm, I'm basically 
pushing a, a, a whole group of my customers away. You know, that's crazy, right? It sounds crazy. Um, but, but it wasn't, you know, and then, you know, we did it. We got rid of commercial heating and air. And eventually we, we kept doing that till we just focused on residential heating and air. And that's, that was uh, the biggest growth we ever had. You know, we grew, you know, we went from a $9 million company to a $15 million company in 12 months. Um, and, and it just, I remember sitting back after that year thinking, you know, wow, but what it did is it just really allowed us to perfect what we did. When I say perfect, it allowed us to become extremely efficient, you know, you know, build different processes. And that's, you know, I mean, to any business owner, um, I would say that's, you know, got to be one of your top priorities when you're trying, when you're in growth mode, you know, when you, you know, when you're trying to, to move up the ladder one more rung, it's, you know, getting the processes in place to be able to handle that. And what it allowed us to do was focus on building processes and, and focus on doing that one thing extremely well. So we got more efficient at it. We got better at it. The reputation of the company, you know, um, you know, continued to, to grow. Um, and that, you know, I would say, you know, that, that is, you know, definitely, you know, the, the um, biggest aha moment, um, you know, of, of, uh, of my career in owning this business was just, you know, understanding that sometimes saying no to a certain part of your business um, can cause you to have tremendous growth. And it, it sounds you know, first, when you think about it, it's like, wait a minute, I, you know, I don't say that's possible, but just in the processes you're able to build and how much more efficient you become, um, you know, the growth is, uh, um, is just amazing when you're able to do that. Yeah, what, I think I, is, it, what I think is so interesting about this part of your story is that, especially in HVAC, you hear, oh, commercials, where the money's at, new construction is where the money's at. And you went the complete opposite way and focused back on those residential customers you had started with. Yeah, it's, you know, and, resi and, the, and the reason why, you know, um, in, in commercial and new construction, I mean, new construction has its challenges, right? I mean, we all know there's, you know, um, there's a 10 year period where you're on the hook, right? So uh, where, you know, anything goes wrong in, in, in a new construction con condominium project, apartments, new homes, you've got, you know, you're on the hook for, for 10 years. That's a, you know, that's a little scary, you know, with commercial, there's a lot of retention, you know, um, you know, uh, a lot of times you're working with a contractor and they don't pay you till they get paid. You know, and sometimes, depending on how that project goes, that, you know, sometimes that can be six, eight months. The beauty of what I saw in residential and just focusing there is you're in, you do the job. At the end of the job, you're handed a check and uh, you get your money right away. The other thing that, that I like about residential is you're dealing direct with the consumer, which some people think we're crazy, right? Why, why would you want to deal with homeowners, right? They're all nuts. Well, I'll tell you what, it's pretty satisfying when you get to the end of the day and you have made, you know, 80 people smile because they're, they've got air conditioning or you fix their air conditioning. It's, you know, it's very satisfying, you know, to go in and, and do that. And, you know, it also, I enjoy it because it's, a, it is a new challenge several times a day, right? I mean, it's a, it's a new customer, it's a, it's a new home, it's a new challenge. Um, and that really keeps things interesting. So, you know, I love the fact that you're paid at the end of the job. Um, I love the fact that you get, you know, you, you move from, from job to job and you just, you get to make people happy. And I, and I don't, you know, I don't know anybody that doesn't enjoy putting a smile on somebody's face. So it's, um, you know, that, that's where we settled in and, and um, yeah, it's been great. Yeah. I, I, just that degree of focus, I think is really hard because, you know, you see companies that go HVAC, plumbing, electrical and like five other things, you know, and it's like, sure, you can go revenue, um, you know, by going not so deep and lots of things, or you can go really deep and dominate. But I think the one golden nugget that you really shared there, which is economies of scale. And that happens when you can get efficient processes out the door, which means that you can outcompete anybody doing less business than you in that particular thing. So imagine some of that spread super thin. They've got different processes set up, They've got different bottlenecks, but if you got everybody moving in that same direction, a lot of the things are just super repetitive and you can just build processes there where other people, they don't have enough volume to even bother building a process there. But because you have it, I bet you in the morning, everything is perfectly sorted from the parts on the truck, ready to roll. And all they got to do is just like turn the truck on and like head home. And a lot of people can't figure that part out. 
But that is so key because it's not just how much money you can make, it's how much you can save. And that is a big part that business owners just forget because you can show really high top line, but it's not top line that powers the growth at the end of the day. No, no that's it. For scalable. It's and you said it, you know, it, 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 um, it is, it, and, you know, and there's so many, you know, as I walk people through the building here, that, you know, I'm a pretty open, business. even, even, you know, other business owners that own eating and air companies in San Diego, I invite them to, to come out, you know, sit, have lunch, I'll, you know, kind of walk them through, um, there's enough business to go around, right, you know, we can, we can all take care of each other, support each other, you know, I know a lot, a lot of business owners don't view things that way, but, but I do 100%, you know, I mean, I would, there's nothing more satisfying than helping somebody grow and, and watching them, them, uh, them grow, but, but you're right, I mean, rolling the processes, you know, like I talked about that 6.30 a.m. meeting every morning where everybody's in a seat, you know, that's where the process starts, um, and, um, you know, it's just when, when you're able to focus on that one thing, those processes become so streamlined, so smooth because they are repetitive, you know, and, um, you know, you know, with us, it's in that meeting while they're in that meeting, their trucks getting loaded They're the trucks that get loaded first are the ones that are furthest away. So when they come out of the meeting, those guys are on the road sooner because they have a further drive. You know, it's, it's the spots that they park in. Um, it's, you know, there's all these little things that you can do. Well, when we, when we were doing, you know, uh, new construction, commercial, all these different things. You, we couldn't do that. You know, we were all over the place, you know. So, you know, projects took, you know, 30% more, you know, it, you know the, the labor hours were 30% higher because you just couldn't have the process that you have when you focus on one thing. So, yeah, my advice to people would be pick something. Number one, make sure it's the one thing that you love. you got to love doing it. But pick, you know, pick something that you love and just stick with it, you know, just, just, you know, try and ignore the, the, you know, the rest of the interference that, that uh, wants to jump into your mind sometimes and just pick something that you love, focus on it and do it well. And you'll be amazed at, at uh, what that will do for your business. So that really was your second aha moment. Your third one is your marketing. So let's talk a little about marketing because it's like the anti-distraction. You building a big focus just on the brand Mozzie. And this has been really super fun and, and almost like personal fulfilling for me to see Mozzie trucks on the road, Mozzie commercials on the TV, Mozzie on the radio, Mozzie, there you got a massive American flag, you've got the billboards. Um, tell us about your thoughts about marketing. Tell us maybe about like customer referrals and, you know, tell us a little bit about, you know, the, the types of dynamics that happen in a city, maybe like San Diego, that's similar to other cities. Yeah. So it's, you know, uh, mar marketing is, um, is where I think, you know, probably the majority of businesses that, that really want to grow get hung up, you know, and, and I would say, you know, there's definitely a line there where you see, you know, uh, you see a lot of those, you know, maybe uh, five to seven uh, person businesses, right, you know, and then there's this, you know, and then there's this big jump, right, where you're, you'll see, you know, the, the companies like, you know, like, like our, our company and, and, you know, um, but I, I think what, what, where a lot of people get hung up and um, yeah, that's where we were hung up there for a little bit too, is with marketing. And, and I think with, with marketing, um, you have to, you know, and this is, you know, this, like I said, you know, I, I'm not, um, you know, education wise, right. I don't have this crazy business degree. I don't, you know, I don't have any of this. So, um, you know, what I do have though is, is uh, um, I don't, I don't have very much fear. You know, and I don't do anything, you know, anything crazy, but, you know, marketing, you, you can't really have a lot of fear if you're, if you're going, going to grow, um, especially when it comes to marketing. And a lot of people get hung up with the thought that, wow, you know, I've got to, you know, I've got to spend $200,000, you know, a TV commercial is, you know, $700 for 15 seconds, you know, and, and um, a lot of people get, get hung up there, but uh, you can only take a business so far with referrals. You can be, continue to build the businesses at a certain rate with referrals, um, and you know because you, you have to remember too. You know, there's, um, you know, there's like in San Diego alone. I think there's a million people that move out of San Diego every year, every year, and a million new people that move into San Diego. You know, and you want to, you know, we want to try and and you know capture a percentage of those people. Um, and to do that, you're not going to do that just just with referrals. You know, you can make it so far. Um, and, you know, referrals are a big part of our business, you know, huge part of our business, those loyal customers. But how do you get that customer to begin with? You know, a lot of times it doesn't come from a, a referral. You've got to market. Um, and, you know, I would encourage people to um, develop a marketing plan um, and just get behind it. Take that leap 
take the loan out, you know, to, to put together a marketing program and um, you'll be shocked at, at what it will do. I mean, it, it's, uh, you know, and you don't have to go crazy. You don't have to spend a million dollars a year, but you know, you know, for us, you know, and that, this was like the, the third, you know, aha moment. It was, we, we sat down and I thought, okay, you know, I'm going to do 7% of what I think I'm going to gross next year. And I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, put together a marketing program and that's, and it was, it was super scary because that's a lot of money to, to invest. Um, and I just thought, okay, I'm going to do this. I've listened to enough people, you know, I've, I, I, you know, seen enough companies to where, you know, I, I you know, I, I think it's going to work, you know, and um, I would encourage people to do it. And we did it and it was just amazing. You know, we invested that 7%. You know, the return on it was just absolutely amazing. Um, and, um, you know, it just exploded from there, you know, because, you know, the, the following year we did the same thing, you know, and then we upped it to aggressive growth mode, which, you know, in San Diego, aggressive growth mode is, is uh, about 10% in any big city, 10% uh, of, of your, uh, um, of, you know, your, what you want your gross to be um, the next year. Um, and with the marketing too, the one thing I realized, you know, this may save some uh, people some time is before you go out and spend the money in the marketing, take a couple steps back and look at your branding. Mm -hmm. Look at, you know, look at your logo, look at your vehicles, you know, take a hard look at, at your branding because, you know, today, uh, because of the, the pace that we operate at, simplicity in branding is everything. You know, I, I, I you know, um, I see so many mistakes every day driving down the road, whether it's on somebody's vehicle, on a billboard, even on TV commercials, where, you know, you literally have three seconds to identify a brand and what it does. And um, you see these trucks with, you know, you know, different companies, brand names on their truck, you know, you know, the, uh, the manufacturers and, you know, it, you, you can't even really tell what they do, you know, um, and um, just sim simplify it. You know, simplify your branding. Like you'll see in San Diego here, um, our billboards, for instance, they say they're a, they're a dark navy blue billboard in big white letters. It says mozzie.com, and underneath of it, it says heating.air.solar. That's it. There's no phone number. There's no pictures of kids with dogs. There's no – it's, it's <laughs> just – you know, you see it, and in, in two seconds, you recognize mozzie.com. And heating air salt, you know, and that's what we want you to think of. When your air conditioner breaks or you want air, we just want you to think, oh, mozzie.com, you know, go to Google, you know, do your thing. Same with the trucks, same with the TV commercials, um, you know, keep them simple, direct, to the point. Um, and, um, you know, that's one of the things, unfortunately, we had to backtrack a little bit and kind of redo some of the branding. Um, you know, um, you know, after we had started spending some money on marketing, um, but really, you know, with the branding, it's about committing to a budget. Don't be afraid. Um, just, just do it. You'll, you'll be thrilled you did. And then, you know, making sure that your message, your brand, making sure that it, it's, it's simple. You told us last time the big mistake is, is the cars and the trucks on the road, because those are little mini moving billboards. Like you can have a billboard. It's on your car. It's on your, on your truck wrap. So I'm wondering, well, first, I want to know, what did the old Mozzie branding used to look like that you would not have at all right now? I wish like, I had the iconic Mozzie. I, I, I would actually show you guys. I'm not sure if I have an old, an old uh, business card here that I can show you. But it was, uh, it was you know, basically uh, a guy bent over on, uh, next to a boiler if you can imagine an old boiler like back east and it was a guy bent over working on a on a boiler and it said m in mozzie mechanical and um you know you know a mistake because the first thing we did is is we did a study and we started asking people if i showed up and this is what you have to you know you have to look at is if you know if i showed up at your front door and i said hey i'm here with m in mozzie mechanical what would the customer think you're there to do you know, and that's, I heard work on my water heater, work on my car, you know, I mean, all these different auto things. Repair, yeah. yeah, auto repair. So, you know, you really have to, uh, you know, because the, the, the kind of the trap we fall into is, 
is we're very familiar with our own industry and kind of what we do. So we tend to, you know, you, you know we, we tend to not simplify things, you know, and, and so that's like one of the first things we did is we, you know, started saying, okay, if I showed up at your door and I introduced myself as Matt with him and Mozzie Mechanical Incorporated, you know, what would I be there to do for you? People were just all over the place. I mean, I, you know, we got maybe 2% of the people that said, you know, work on my air conditioner. So, um, you know, we just really, you know, simplified it. Um, and you know, if I was there with Mozzie heating and air, what was I there to do? It's like, okay, that's a pretty, that's a pretty mm-hmm. simple one. But yeah, just some of those those branding and, and marketing mistakes, um, you know, that, that you, you know, that I wish I would have learned early on because it would have saved me, you know, a lot of money um, having to go back and redo these things. So really make sure that your branding is dialed in. Make sure you, everything that, that leaves your place of business needs to have your logo on it. Our, our laptop computers, when you, when they open, they say Mozzie on them. Every vehicle's wrapped. You know, and, you know, our booties, when we go into the home, those have Mozzie on them. We put cool. down a doormat to, to, to step on to put our booties on, um, you know, before we enter the home. That has Mozzie on it. Our pens have Mozzie on it. I mean, you know, just everything you do, you should try and get your branding on, you know, to try and build that. And that's what we have now in San Diego is Mozzie mm-hmm. is a well-known brand. Um, you know, so I tell people, you know, really focus on getting your brand dialed in and then don't be afraid to launch a, a marketing campaign where you're spending between 6 and percent, 6 and 10% of, uh, of what you want your gross sales to be. Mm-hmm. House Call did a similar thing. You probably remember the old logo also had a little mm-hmm. guy. He was in a truck sticking out his hand with his phone. And I think we did the same exact thing as you did, realized this is not simple enough. And we got rid of the guy in the truck and put the door, which is makes so much sense for us now, much yeah. more simple. But when we took him away, so many pros were so upset. I remember reading one of the chats. Someone said, I identified with the guy in the truck. Can you please bring him back? And he said, no, <laughs> sorry. He's gone. He's, he's gone. gone. He's, yeah, in, he's in the office now. <laughs> but the, you know, and, and I would say, you know, um, I know at first it's hard, right? Because you go out and you reach out to, to you know, a marketing company that does branding and you kind of get that, that sticker shock, right? It's like, oh, $5,000 to create a logo. You know, wow. You know, that's, that's, that's expensive. Well, it's really not. If you think about that, that is what's going to, you know, these people are professionals. And you think about that that's what you're going to be known as, you know, for many, 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 many years. You want to make sure that's right. So, you know, spend the money up front. It's well worth it. Get something professionally done by somebody that knows branding um, and uh, and then get behind it with some good marketing. And, um, you know, it's uh, – let me tell you, there's, not, there's no secrets to where I'm at today. Yeah, I run a $20 million a year company, but it, it is, um, you know – it's just, there's just like five simple steps. Like we've been talking about, you know, taking, hiring the right people, taking care of the people, empowering the people, investing in your branding, you know, um, you know, investing in a good marketing campaign. You know, these are all things, um, you know, have balance in your life as a person, because if you don't, you know, none of this is, is, is going to work. It's one of the most important things. And you know, there's a lot of people sitting out there today that, uh, that are frustrated thinking, man, you know, do I want to keep doing this? You know, I feel like I'm not getting anywhere. Don't give up. Don't give up. Give yourself a break. Give yourself a break. Bring balance, you know, work on the things that you struggle with, bring balance and, um, and just give yourself a break. You know, it, it, uh, uh, you know, invest in your people, invest in your company. Um, and, uh, you know, try and have a good time. Try and keep a smile on your face. Yeah, I, I like your Ferrari that. Friday. Yeah, Ferrari Friday. Friday. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, one of our one of our company values is enjoy the journey. So yeah. you know, it's re- really important that you you do love what you do, and that when you do come to work, you're excited to go to work, and that it's not like oh my god, it's Monday. Obviously, yeah. waking up, yeah, it could be a little hard, but like uh-huh. you know, get there, you know, it's fun. And I really like some of those really tactical tips that you shared around playing a funny video at 6.30 in the morning, getting people, you know, when they're smiling and laughing and they go out and they visit that first customer, like that impression is everything. And we've really thought through a lot of those steps. And I think a lot of pros, they get lost either sometimes too far down the rabbit hole, focusing on one thing, they're not looking at the big picture, right? The branding aspects, or, you know, they're, they're not going far enough and they're forgetting about those little details. I mean, even putting the branding on the booties, just that impression, you know, when you're talking about you're delivering, 
high quality, high end products, you know, this all goes part and parcel with delivering that. And so that allows you to charge that when other people can't, because they're not doing those things. Their trucks aren't branded. Who knows as a fly by night guy. So I feel like all these things you've put together, they all mesh really well, um, which there isn't just one secret. We always share this. There's no silver bullet, it's just no. a bunch of lead bullets for everybody. And you got to keep on shooting. You got to keep on trying. Don't, don't just give up. So it's a lot of, a lot of little things, like you said, right? It's not, you know, people always ask, well, you know, what is it? Can I come sit down with you? And it's like, no, it's, 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 it's all these little things strung together that, that make the, the difference, you know, and, and, um, you know, the booties and stuff like that, you know, when you're, if you're going to demand a, a higher price, um, you know, you better be different, right? You better not look like that guy that just walked in before you. Otherwise, you're not going to get that higher price. You know, you, you know, you better do some of these things that make you look different. You know, our goal as a company is when we, you know, when we get done with a with an estimate before we present price to the customer, when we get done with an estimate, we want the customer to be thinking in their mind, oh, there's no way I can afford this company. Based on what I've seen, right, with, you know, the professionalism that, you know, starts with the TV commercial and, you know, the conversation when they call in and, and then the whole, you know, process in the home. You know, I want the customer to be thinking, oh, no way, I can't, there's no way I'm going to go before this company. And then all of a sudden, you lay out a, a, a price that's very fair and, 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 and very similar to what they, they saw from maybe the guy before you or two guys before you. Um, you know, that's where, you know, if there's any, you know, any secret out there, that's really it, right? It's just look different, you know, be different um, and, and just, you know, uh, you know, be fair with customers. Yeah, be fair with customers. All right, so we've got two more questions we like to ask. The one that I always like to ask is, Matt, who do you know that is either another big company, uh, famous person, someone inspirational, an industry titan, someone such as yourself, that you can introduce us to, that we could have on Pro Talks, that we can ask similar questions to get all these golden nuggets that you've shared with us today. Because this is definitely running long, but I didn't want to stop you because you've been on a roll this entire time. We're like, yeah, keep so, talking, Matt. <laughs> yeah, you, well, I mean, you've had one of them on already, right? You know, Ken Goodrich. Um, um, I don't, I don't know if you, if um, you know, I don't know if you've had Rusty on from uh, from We Care Heating and Air. Mm -mm. No, uh -uh. I, I don't know if you know Rusty. Um, impressive guy, um, you know, definitely somebody that, that I think uh, you know, the pros out there would enjoy hearing from. I mean, just when we talk about heart and commitment and, you know, um, you know, taking care of your, your people and, you know, has even a little bit different perspective, um, you know, I, I would, you know, definitely, you know, reach out to uh, reach out to him. Um, the other person which I'd say is, you know, Leland Smith. Um, you know, Leland Smith uh, runs a company called Service Champions, right? You know, and part of a group that has companies across the United States, you know, very, you know, very successful, but, you know, a guy that started down in the, in the, in the trenches like we did, like you did, Roland, like I did, like a lot of the people that are out there watching this right now, you know, that, that uh, um, you know, that started there. You know, we weren't, you know, we weren't born into the, the business with a bunch of money or, you know, you know, we, we had to go through this, this process. And uh, I would say, you know, those are two guys that uh, um, that are you know highly respected in our industry. Definitely highly respected by me. That um, that I would reach out to. That I'd say you know uh, you guys would enjoy talking to. Perfect. I'm gonna totally gonna have you make the introductions to. I will because they sound amazing. <laughs> yeah, they are. And then Matt, the question we like to end with: You've authentically brought us through all the ups and downs of your life from saying, I'm not going to complete high school. I'm going to go out and get a job right away to battling addiction, waking up under a bridge with your wife and your son gone to now building one of the most successful HVAC businesses in San Diego. Like I said, in the beginning, you have to remember that because even before I worked at house call, I knew what Mozzie was like that goes to show your marketing is important. Your branding is important. And no matter where your customer is in their journey, start planting that seed it, whether it's on a commercial or a billboard is super important. So you're at this amazing place in your life. Now you have your Ferrari Fridays. If you were to give one piece of encouragement or one piece of advice to someone who wants to be where you are now, what would it be? You know, the, the one piece of advice I would give somebody is um, um, trust and empower the people around you. Um, you know, the people, you know, um, 
the people in your life, not, not just within your business, but you know, they, you have a whole different, so you have a whole other support system, you know, outside of your business, you know, with family and, and friends and, and, you know, and, and, you know, spouses, um, you know, start there and then bring that into your business, you know, because when you, uh, when you empower somebody, when you trust someone and you empower some, someone, um, you know, that does something special for them, you know, and um, there, there's a lot of us that go through life that, that um, get cheated of that at times. And, uh, you know, when someone, when someone sees that you have faith in them, that you trust them, that you're willing to, to work with them to get wherever they want in their life, you know, it, it, and I do this within the business. If you want to be the general manager of this company, I'm going to work with you until you get there, you know, or if outside of this business, you're struggling somewhere and, and, and you need a hand, you know, the people around me know that that's, I'm, I'm there for them. And I would say that would be my advice to, to, to people, to anybody that wants to get where I'm at that wants to be successful is trust and empower the people around you because you can't do it yourself. I'm one person. There's no way that I can come anywhere close to where I'm out today unless I had an incredible group of people behind me, you know, in my personal life and, and in the business here. So, you know, um, you know, uh, trust those people, empower those people, keep the, 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 your, the environment that they work in or live in fun and you will be where I'm at. In, in no time at all. That's what it takes. That's, per that's perfect advice. And we'd love to do the same at House Call Pro. So I'm so glad our philosophies are similar. I see, um, I see your, your, I see your building. When I walked in, I, I'll never forget, you know, you know, music playing, get people playing, the, what was that, Bago in the, in, in, you know, in the middle. I mean, just, you know, the most incredible environment, you know, uh, and that is what you have to have. That's why you're so successful. That's why we're so successful. Um, and I would tell people that, you know, I mean, there's a lot of other little things you need to do, of course, but that's where it's got to start. For sure. That's super helpful advice. Pros, you've heard, I don't know, we went at least through three aha moments, all the good and nuggets. Um, we might even split this into two episodes. I don't know what we're gonna do. There's a Nobody lot here. So this is, this, is, this is awesome. Thank you so much for spending this hour and a half uh, just sharing all your wisdom and, and getting personal and, and sharing some of the, the tough times uh, that I think not, it doesn't get talked uh, enough about. So that's, that's very, very helpful for our pros. And um, thanks again. Yep, no problem. Thanks, guys. All right, bye, Matt. We'll okay. talk to you soon. All right, bye. see you later. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode. Look forward to seeing you next week. For more information, go to housecallpro.com forward slash protox.